Upon hearing this, Jeremy's expression changed. He walked nearer and saw that Meredith had her back against him. She was talking to Madeline's doctor. Why is this happening? I never expected Maddie to do something like that. Not long after, Meredith was heard sighing. Jeremy had not gotten the full story. However, when he was about to go forward and question them, the doctor frowned and said awkwardly, sigh. It's against my medical ethics to lie, but your sister is really something else. She isn't pregnant, but she insisted on pretending to be pregnant. She even used fake blood to pretend that the baby had been affected. When we found out, she threatened to kill herself and forced us to lie with her. We're speechless. Jeremy's face was immediately covered with a layer of ice after he heard this. She was pretending? Madeline was pretending to be pregnant? Her blood was also fake? I can understand why Maddie would have done that, but I never would have imagined she'd threaten to kill herself and force you guys to lie to her husband. She's so headstrong. I think you should talk to your sister. Her husband will see through her fake pregnancy one day. The doctor turned around to leave after talking to her. Meredith chased up to him. Doctor, don't tell anyone about this, especially my sister's husband. I'm afraid that he might kill her if he finds out. The doctor sighed helplessly. You should take care of it yourself. At the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with Madeline. She can be discharged at any time. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Meredith thanked the doctor as he walked away. After thanking the doctor, Meredith sighed and frowned. Maddie, you've gone over the top. I can forgive you for pretending to be me and lying to Jeremy that you're his childhood friend. However, how could you lie about being pregnant? Sigh. Meredith sighed and turned around. She lifted her head and saw Jeremy in the distance. Consequently, she let out a shocked expression. She looked at Jeremy timidly. J. Jeremy, when did you get here? Jeremy looked at Meredith who was so nervous that she was rubbing her hands together. He suppressed his anger. You're aware of that woman's scheme, and you're still trying to lie to me for her? Having heard Jeremy's words, Meredith was stunned for a few seconds. Nevertheless, she looked at him with a puzzled look on her face and said, Jeremy, I don't know what you're talking about. Who? Who did I help? You must have misheard me. When Jeremy saw that Meredith refused to tell him the truth, he frowned. I heard what you said to the doctor, and you still want to lie to me? Meredith shook her head, and her eyes turned red from grievance. Jeremy, I'm not lying to you. How could I lie to you? Are you still not going to tell me the truth? Jeremy, all right, if you don't want to tell me the truth, I'll ask her myself. Jeremy turned around, his eyes were cold. Jeremy, no. Meredith ran over and grabbed Jeremy's arm. Jeremy, don't be angry. Please don't be angry. She sobbed. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have lied to you. However, if I hadn't lied for Maddie, you wouldn't be able to forgive her. That's why I. Meredith grabbed Jeremy's arm and looked at him with tears in her eyes. Jeremy, please don't blame Maddie. She knows she's at fault. I know she won't do such a thing ever again. It's my fault. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have stayed with you after your wedding. I caused Maddie to fake her pregnancy out of jealousy. I also shouldn't have told Maddie about what happened when we first met and made her have that sinister idea. That's why she lied and told you that she's that little girl. It's all my fault, Jeremy. Just put all the blame on me. Jeremy's eyes were extremely dark when he heard this. It was all fake. She was only trying to make him pity her. She was a pathological liar indeed. Why would he think that she was the little girl that he wanted to protect? That girl was Meredith. Flames of wrath rose up in his chest as he recalled how gentle he had treated Madeline just now. Consequently, he turned around and charged back toward her room. Meredith called out after him frantically. However, a smirk had already appeared on her lips. Madeline had closed her eyes when Jeremy barged in with a dark expression on his face. Her heart skipped a beat. Jeremy, what's wrong? Jeremy did not say anything. He walked toward the side of the bed slowly. Madeline felt the aura of death coming from him. However, just as she was about to speak, Jeremy reached out his hands and grabbed her by the neck. Jeremy. At that moment, Madeline could not breathe. Her pale face turned red. Madeline Crawford, you deserve to die. Jeremy moved his lips frigidly. His dark eyes were staring at her as if he wanted to see through her. It would have been fine if you had only pretended to be pregnant, but how dare you impersonate Meredith? Did you really think you'd be able to get away with it? What? Madeline's eyes widened in confusion, but she could not say anything as she was being choked. She could only see Jeremy's eyes. They looked like they were about to slice her with a knife a million times. Madeline, since you had the nerve to lie to me, 
you should know what the consequences you should suffer are. After he said that, he pushed Madeline away. Madeline was like a broken doll that was being thrown away. She fell from the bed, and her head hit the corner of its frame. Additionally, the IV drip in the back of her hand was ripped out, and she trembled from the excruciating pain. She placed her hand on her stomach subconsciously and got up despite being in pain. Subsequently, she sat on the floor and grabbed Jeremy's pants. Jeremy, I didn't lie to you. I'm are really pregnant. I have the doctor's proof. You can take me for an ultrasound now. Jeremy, please trust me for once. Just once, Jeremy. Hey. Jeremy scoffed lightly. He looked down at Madeline coldly with his dark eyes. Madeline, I underestimated you. You even managed to bribe the doctors here to make them lie to me about your pregnancy. Do you think I'm a fool? Do you think I'd be fooled so easily? Madeline lifted her head and sobbed sadly. No, I haven't lied to you, Jeremy. Why would I lie to you about something like that? I really am pregnant. Jeremy, you don't believe me? Touch my stomach. The child really is here. Madeline stood up with all her might and grabbed Jeremy's hand. She wanted him to believe her. She wanted him to feel the life that was already forming in her stomach. However, Jeremy pushed away her hand. Get lost. Don't touch me with your filthy hand. Jeremy's eyes were as sharp as knives. You're not pregnant. However, even if you really are, I'll abort it because you do not deserve it. Madeline, a woman like you will never have the chance to have anything to do with me. Jeremy. When Madeline saw that Jeremy was about to leave, she chased after him while stumbling. She grabbed his arm. Jeremy, don't go. You told me you'd protect me forever. I am Linny. Have you forgotten? Jeremy, Madeline begged for him to stay, but what she said triggered him. Almost instantly, she felt an intense aura of death. The next second, she was pushed to the ground by Jeremy. Consequently, Madeline clutched her stomach in pain. She could see the man's terrifying gaze through her tears. Madeline, you deserve to die. Jeremy, cold sweat started to appear on Madeline's body due to the pain. However, Jeremy left after he said those hurtful words. He was not concerned about her well-being at all. Madeline got up from the ground and smiled bitterly. Her eyes were filled with tears. Jez, you're no longer the boy Linny once knew. Throughout the next few days, Jeremy did not show up. There was no word of concern at all. It was as if he had forgotten about her. Madeline laid on the bed but did not recover even after a few days. On the contrary, she felt herself getting weaker and weaker. So, she asked Ava to bring her to a specialized hospital for a checkup. When the results came out, Madeline was shocked. Miss Crawford, you don't have much time. If you don't abort the child, you don't have a chance. The doctor did not beat around the bush. Perhaps she had seen too much of life and death and was already numb. Madeline's vision turned black for a while. If Ava were not there with her, she might have passed out. She knew she could not delay treating the tumor. However, she had not expected misfortune to come so fast. Maddie, you can have a child again, while you only have one life, Ava advised. She did not wait any longer before arranging the surgery for Madeline. After a while, Ava came back with the receipt. Madeline held it in her hand with her face that was completely pale. All of a sudden, she crumpled it up and threw it into the bin. Ava was stunned. Maddie? Madeline's eyes were wet. She looked oddly determined. I won't give up this child even if I die. The tumor would worsen even if she were to abort the child. It was just a matter of time. Not to mention, it might be the only trammel she could leave for Jeremy. It was difficult to sway Madeline's decision now. Ava had no choice. She could only advise her to at least let Jeremy know about her condition. Nonetheless, Madeline shook her head and smiled bitterly. What was the difference between telling him and not telling him? He would not care about her. To Jeremy, it would be best if she died. For the sake of the child in her stomach, Madeline had to live positively. The doctor told her that the child was counteracting her. The more the child grew inside her, the worse Madeline would become since the little dumpling's position was directly above the tumor that would worsen day by day. Madeline submitted countless resumes online, and they elicited no response. However, in the end, she got an order. It was from a small company. They wanted Madeline to design a pair of rings, and they offered her a decent price. Of course, Madeline accepted the order. 
She worked the entire day in her room and only came downstairs to make some food. The child was three months old. However, it was winter, so she did not look like she was pregnant while wearing her sweater. During this period, Jeremy did not ask about her, and she was already used to it. All of a sudden, she heard footsteps at the front door. Furthermore, she saw Jeremy returning to the house. The man was wearing a black leather jacket. There was an air of asceticism to him, and he looked alluring. There were two bags with cartoons printed on them in his hands. When Madeline looked closer, she noticed that they were children's clothes. She was surprised but still felt delighted and hopeful. Nonetheless, she then heard Jeremy's cold voice saying, these are for Murr. When he spoke, he sounded gentle. However, his gentleness was for Meredith. The hope in Madeline's eyes was crushed instantly. Madeline, you couldn't possibly have thought that these are for you. The man mocked as he questioned her, how could I have a child with you? What he added crushed Madeline's heart. She looked at his cold face with pain in her heart. Jeremy, you're so devious. You expect me to be kind to AB asterisk TCH like you? Madeline, do you think you deserve it? He chuckled lightly. His deep eyes scanned Madeline's colorless face. Subsequently, he turned around and walked upstairs. Looking at his back, a bitter smile appeared on Madeline's dry lips. She mumbled softly. Jeremy, if I really don't deserve it, why did you make that promise back then? Madeline was on time for her checkup at the hospital. Naturally, her body had weakened from her last checkup. Ava was worried sick. She told Madeline to abort the baby again, but the latter only smiled. Ava, can you go somewhere with me? The wind on the beach in the early winter felt like knives against their cheeks. Ava did not know why Madeline had asked to come here. When she was about to ask her, Madeline said, Ava, I have a request. If I don't make it, I hope you'll throw my ashes into this sea.